Brethren, praise God for this wonderful opportunity that is giving us to think about sound doctrine, sound faith, sound church. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you for this opportunity again. Speak to us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I come with a text. The Bible is the word of God and it's a light to our feet. And so I bring Titus chapter 2 verses 1 following following. And just like it has been my custom, I depend solely on the word itself. So I read it the way it has been written and then I cast a few things on it. And so this portion, Titus chapter 2, the Bible say, talks about qualities of a sound church and it reads, But as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine, that the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience, the older women, likewise, that they may be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may admonish the younger women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, just homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded. In all things, showing yourself to be a patient, to be a pattern of good works in the doctrine showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Exhort bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, to be well-pleasing in all things, not answering back, not preferring, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. In verse 11, he says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us, that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak the things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. And this is the word of God. Friends, this is the word of God written by a man called Paul. Paul was a lead minister there. And the two young men whom Paul takes pleasure in and working with are Timothy and Titus. And in this point, we look at Titus, a young man who had joined Paul in the ministry. And so Paul, an adult, a mature man in the faith, gives Titus, a young man, detailed instruction on how to conduct himself. Remember in chapter 1 of verse 5, chapter 1 verse 5, Paul tells Titus 
that for this reason I left you in Crete, that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. Friends, Paul gives instructions and there was a reason as to why he had left this young man to be in charge of the church on that island, Crete. And he gives him detailed instructions and he gives him a task. He specifies what he should do. And in this portion of scripture, he enumerates qualities of the sound church, qualities of sound doctrine, qualities of sound faith. And so he categorizes everyone. He first of all talks, but as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. You, Timothy, speak the things, speak the words, speak issues that are for sound doctrine that will make a sound church, that will bring about sound faith. And he says that the older men, older men, be sober. Older men, be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith and in love. And actually, the word sober is connot, connot, the connotation is seriousness, to be alert, to be sensible, not affected by alcohol. And you've heard someone, people say these days, that are you sober? Because someone, when the moment you begin speaking things that are not coordinated, then someone will say you're not sober. But now he's saying Christians, believers, men, and here he's actually addressing older men, be sober, sensible. And then he goes down to the older women. But of course, we men, the Bible talks about us as the heads of our families. And so I just want to urge any man listening and watching that actually what Paul tells us to be sober, to be reverent, to be temperate, to be sound in faith, in love and in patience so that we can discharge our duty, our roles as fathers, as husbands, as men. And here he's talking about older men, but of course it cuts across to all Christian men. And so my brothers, may God help us to rethink about this, this text here. And then he goes on to talk about, to talk to the older women. Likewise, that they may be, have reverent behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. And when you move about in our generation, these kind of things actually speak louder. But of course, we have men and women that we need to be positioned in the church. Men and women need to be positioned in their families to teach good things to the young ones. And so that those that are coming up will also continue on. And so Paul is talking about these things because he doesn't want the church to collapse. He's talking about the older men, talking about the older women. And then he goes down to verse 6. And then he says to the young people, to the young men, to be sober-minded. And he knew it because actually many times younger people are also overtaken by very many things. And so he says, be sober-minded, young men, be sober-minded in all things, in all things. And so when he says this, he's just encouraging these young people to keep, keep in the line, not to derail themselves. And so when he saw, when he talks about being discreet, being just, being, you know, pure, He's just encouraging that actually we should not derail ourselves, but we should remain online. And the word discreet, actually, it means something, I mean, leading to reducing chaos, to be cautious, to be modest in speech. Know when to speak and speak what. Now, our times, we have people who speak recklessly we have people who speak not timely and so he urges us he urges believers whatever he was talking to 
Timothy, he says it to us today. To be discreet, just like the women being homemakers, the men be homemakers, children be homemakers, be good, obedient, you know. And of course, he was actually addressing everyone. And for the women, for the men, for the young people. And when you go to a home, you'll find that the father, the mother, okay, that's an ideal family, but also find that the children. But then you'll find, you know, when people are not coordinating. And so here Paul talks about a sound church, a sound faith, and a sound doctrine, which is actually diminishing slowly but surely. You find people call themselves Christian preachers, but what they teach to their people is not sound. You find fathers doing otherwise. You find mothers doing otherwise. You find children doing otherwise. And so, friends, why I emphasize, why I keep dwelling so much on this is that actually we need to bring back ourselves online where things have not moved well. May God help us to realign ourselves. Sound doctrine, sound faith, and the sound church. Of course, everyone will claim that come, here is a sound church for you. Someone will claim, come, here is a sound faith for you. But the whole thing is Paul is telling us what the standard is. So the reason why God has left us here, you and me, to put straight, to put in place, like Paul was telling Titus in chapter 1 verse 5, I left in Crete to, so that you set in order. Friends, God is giving us an opportunity to set in order things that are not going well. Our generation is yearning for sound, sound faith, sound doctrine, and sound church. So may God who is our father, God who is our keeper, God who is our protector, God who is our master supplier, continue supplying us with the energies, with the strength, with the love, with the caution, so that we shall be able to remain a faithful people, a faithful people during our generation. So that we may be sound. Are you a husband? Are you a man, so to say? Are you a wife? Are you a woman, so to say? Are you a young person? Are you a young man? Are you a young woman? The Paul is addressing all of us. And as I wind up this, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul encourages, of course, actually, this young man, Titus and Timothy, are of the same age, I mean, the same generation. And so in chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, Paul says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Now, this is a whole lot of a message that can come in its own name. But I urge you to read it because he says in season and out of season, whether the season is favorable or not favorable, preach it. But also saying that for the time will come when people not endure sound doctrine and we urge ourselves to keep in there, to keep with the sound doctrine, okay? That actually um, we remain exemplary and so that actually when the Lord Jesus Christ comes, comes back, he will find a remnant. A remnant is the remainder that actually even if someone falls off, we remain strong. And may God enable you, may God enable me to continue with the sound faith in the sound doctrine, in the sound church, and so that at the end of it all, we give glory to God, who is our Father and Master and Savior. And so, friends, may the, the Lord God, who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep keeping you, keep providing for you, keep supplying you with the strength, with the ability to keep in the sound doctrine, and so that you Go out to preach in season and out of season. 
Father, we thank you that you speak to us these words and how I pray that you enable us. The enablement comes from you by the power of your Holy Spirit. Continue guiding us, O God. Continue teaching us, O God. Continue directing our thoughts, speech, and actions and so that we shall keep on and you will find us still strong and believing in you, God our Father. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs>